Good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon. My name is Mr. Carson. For you all, for those of you who don't know, um, I'll be filling in for Mrs. Rodas today. I am going to have you all take out your notebooks first and write this assignment down in the table of contents. Under bell ringer. Under bell ringer, yes. And I'll read these off on the board so you can see what y'all have to do. a lot of y'all are finishing up, so who wants to volunteer and tell me what they said for number one? What comes to mind when you hear the word separation?
civil rights act of them. Separation and segregation kind of go hand in hand. Okay. Separation means to me you're apart or away from each other. Apart or away? So sort of. Okay. I like that. Do you have something? Number one. Sadness. Sadness? Okay. Guys, please stop the side chatter. All right, number two. Who wants to uh, briefly describe a time when you've experienced separation and how does it make you feel? Um, well, my best friend moved to July and I got sad. So your best friend moved out of the country and it made you feel really sad. Okay. Yeah, you hear something. I used to have like a next door neighbor named Spencer and we were like the best friends on the other side and we moved to Louisville and I haven't seen him since. You haven't seen him since then? Okay, so that made you feel really sad. Okay. Yeah. Um, my brother-in-law went back for uh, a second tour in Afghanistan. Okay, so your brother-in-law went back to Afghanistan and that made you feel really, really sad. Okay, yeah. Um, well, I have two. One is during summer break. When I had nobody to talk to, um, because I had nobody to talk to. And then the other one... Is um, like whenever one time one of my friends just stopped talking to me, and um, that made me feel really sad. Okay, so basically what I'm gathering is these experiences made you feel really sad. You experienced a separation and it made you feel bad, and they brought about negative feelings. Okay, I'm gonna get two more, two more people in. Um, my parents sent me at the house to go on this thing, um, and it was okay for me because it wasn't really such a good area. Like we don't have anything to worry about really, and I just stayed there and well. So, did it make you feel lonely? Did it make you feel, no, it didn't. It, made, it actually made you feel good. And, well, sort of in between. Okay, so it can sort of bring about mixed feelings. One more. Uh, you. No. Are we doing number two? Yeah, number two. Okay. I was separated from my bouncy ball. And <laughs> 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 I was very sad. Okay, I mean, so sometimes we put this value on, on objects that, that sort of we, you know, we really like and we get separated from them. We feel really bad and we feel negative about it. So, that's understandable. Okay. Yeah. All right, now we're going to transition into an activity that involves the candy, but you all are not allowed to eat it yet, so I'll tell you about the candy. Okay? All right, so it's a really simple activity, but when I say, guys, please calm down. You have to hear my instructions. When I say move, Move to a different spot, but you cannot take your candy with you. Leave it at your desk. Yes, you will eventually go back to your spot. So leave, leave, guys, leave your stuff at your desk, including your candy. Okay? Everything. Alright, so move. Leave everything at your desk.
something I'll get you the answer there. Uh, but I know I'm just reading from my notes. But there shouldn't be anybody in here who has two pieces of candy. No, no one in here should have two. You shouldn't have two. If you have two pieces of candy, you need to give it up. Except this type of rice.
particular country or particular place. Good. Um, this, this is probably a family being forced out of their home, being forced out of where they're so accustomed to living and they have to travel. They're forced to move somewhere else due to, you know, whether it be persecution or... Persecution, does someone ever find that for me? Aside from someone else? Yeah. Um, like, um, persecution is like when um, you're being <coughs> pursued, sort of, or like, like if pursued, pursued in a negative way. A negative way. Okay. Do you have some? Okay. Do you have something to add on to that? Kind of like um, some of them all in the they're all trying to find him. So, a song in Laden, the example, they try to find him pretty well. Alright, I'll get one more. Um, it's kind of like, um, sometimes, it's kind of like World War II, the Nazis were trying to get the Jews, and a lot of them had to do a lot of crazy things to um, avoid the Nazis and get away from the persecution. Some of them went to America, others... I think went to like France and then when France came off the they kept on having to move. Good, that's a great example. Uh, Alright, so we're going to move. Persecution is basically the discrimination on a group of people or among a group of people due to race, religion, certain beliefs that somebody may not you know, agree with. And so it's, persecution is a very negative, negative thing. So this is the pre-partition map of India. So this was a map of India right before the partition hit. Uh, can someone raise their hand and tell me how this differs from the current map of India? How it's different from the one you all are most familiar with? Yes, I don't know. Um, Austin. Um, Austin. It's, it's separated into um, different countries. Into two, two different like sort of sections of the yeah, country. So. Like, Purple and green. Okay, and these colors obviously symbolize something. Um, and the purple. And okay, and the purple, the princely states. Can someone tell me what a princely state is? Have y'all been y'all been learning about principalities and things like that? It's probably like a monarchy. Um, like they don't have an actual like democracy. Um, they have like an actual thing. It's like. There's, there's this one sort of like a hierarchy. Says, yeah, there's one guy who says, like, you have to do this and this and this and pay me this. And they have no say that 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 could be it. Um, what, what these princely states are, they are basically areas that are governed or ruled by, uh, by Indian government or Indian uh, authority. Whereas the green, th this is the, the region that was ruled primarily by British India. The British actually occupied, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but the British actually occupied the subcontinent of India 350 years prior to the partition, around 350 years. So there was a British presence in, in, these, uh, in this particular subcontinent for over three centuries. So that, it's a pretty big deal. And, and this is sort of how it was split up right before the Indian partition happened. So. And we're going to go into a couple other maps here. This is the map of India right after the partition happened. So can someone, there's a big difference between this map. There's one particular difference between this map and the current map that you all probably can see from looking at it. Can someone tell me what it is? Yes. India is a lot smaller. India is a bit smaller, okay. So it's not divided into as many sections, as many parts of it is now. Yeah. Pakistan was formed and part and, and Pakistan was formed and part of India is now Pakistan. Okay, so Pakistan, as we know it today, it's just one country. It's its own country to the northwest of India. But here you can see it's divided into East and West Pakistan. Uh, the reasoning for this partition, the main reason uh, it happened, is that Muslim leaders, they did not favor having just one large country for people to go coexist within. Um, they sort of wanted to split this country up into 
different sections for people to live in due to religious differences, things of that nature. You all know India, a lot of Indian people are very religious by nature. Um, can someone tell me what the two main religions are in India today? Hinduism and Buddhism. Hinduism and Buddhism. And which one's more prominent? Hinduism. Hinduism. Good. Whereas back then, during this time, the two main religions here, Buddhism was also one of them, and Muslim. There were a lot of Muslims back then as well. Um, as you can see here, the pie chart down to the left, it sort of separates the people by religion. Uh, it was primarily Hindu back then as well. It was 82% Hindu. 12.7% uh, Muslim, and then the other four religions, they were sort of dispersed amongst one another. Uh, and then, as you can see, a lot of the Muslims, they were forced into East and West Pakistan, whereas many of the Hindus were, who lived in the Indus River Valley up until this point, they were sort of forced into India to live Because a lot of people couldn't really see, particularly the Muslims, they couldn't see these two religions coexisting with one another. So they split up the, uh, the subcontinent into different regions to where one religion could live with, with one religion and then the other religion could live with people who shared the same religion with them. So it was sort of the separation of religions. That was the main, the main thing with this partition. Uh, this is a map. This is a present day map of India, which I'm sure a lot of you all are familiar with. Um, another thing is that I forgot to mention with this. This slide, as you can see, West Pakistan, today West Pakistan is just Pakistan. It's known as what we know as, uh, it's just the country of Pakistan. Whereas East Pakistan, it broke off eventually uh, a few decades later and became a country that I'm sure a lot of you all are aware of. Uh, you all know this country by chance? It's located, obviously it's located to the east of India, so eastern India. You know what this country is? Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Present day East Pakistan in this map is actually Bang Bangladesh today. <clears throat> Alright, so the casualties. There were obviously a lot of casualties that came from this particular event. Um, there were an estimated 250,000 to somewhere around a million people who died due to this catastrophic event that just destroyed India and destroyed their well being. Um, and as you can see, these are people who are who have probably passed out of, of hunger, who have, who have died of hunger, thirst, both, what have you. So these conditions were just brutal, just pretty much impossible to live in for some people. And this, can someone tell me what this picture might be representative of? What, what these people might be? Yeah. Um, maybe old Muslim people who the old man might be dying due to the malnutrition, lack of lack of uh, water, thirst, things like that. Yeah, so, so this is most likely a family who has been forced out of their home because of uh, religious differences, because of just things that they believe in. Um, they've been forced out of their home to move somewhere else, move elsewhere. And so due to lack of water, lack of food, they're obviously very, they're in very, very bad shape. And this was the case with a lot of Indian people during this time. Uh, it's kind of, this picture's kind of hard to see. Can someone tell me sort of what this, what this picture is, what it's about? It you can see, kind of see like a person who died in it. And I think I can see a person. Yeah. Like a person who died in it. But I'm not sure. I think it's like a... Either that or a bunch of items from the opposite religion being burned. I mean burned. Burned. Okay. It, 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 my apologies. Um, this is actually a picture of, it's, I know it's kind of hard to make out, it's a picture of a car being burnt in the middle of a, of a village or a, or a small city during that time. And uh, these people are all gathered around, and, there, it, and you can just tell it, it's complete chaos, complete complete anarchy that's happening here. Um, can someone tell me what this is representative of? Like, what, what's going on here? What events going on here? It's, yeah, that's kind of hard. Yeah. Maybe, like, some kind of like religious
throw a government into complete chaos. Like, imagine explosions, people stealing stuff, killing each other, or a, for a little carton of water. What, why does anarchy occur? Why, why would anarchy like this happen? What, what causes it to happen? Um, something that happens, like, something that a war person doesn't agree with, um, um, basically that one, but, um, not that crazy. Right, so anarchy is basically caused by there not being a set ruler, a set authority to sort of govern over people, because you know, as you all know, we have President Obama today, who's sort of, uh, who's sort of our authority figure, who some of us look up to him as a role model and things like that. These people didn't have that back then. They didn't actually, have... Actually, the President of the United States is an authority figure, and he, and he is to be respected. Right, right. Uh, he, he's someone who is to be looked up to by, by all the American people, because what's in his best interest we must agree with, because he is the president, he's the leader of this country. Um, so th this chaos and this anarchy came about because there was no leader. There was nobody for people to really look up to and sort of go about living. Yeah? So that's pretty much what would happen if America went with like the
Another thing also is, shortly after the partition hit India, he fled India. Uh, just, just because of the conditions, because of the, the utter chaos that was happening there. He actually fled India. Um, and later, I'm not sure exactly how, but he, he was murdered. Um, and and, and that's, that's how he, he died. But he was definitely a very influential figure in India's history when the country was flourishing, when, when it was actually doing well for itself, he was, he was there to uh, And he didn't, he didn't sort leave of, India. He didn't leave India. Oh, he did not? Yeah. Okay. Um, what did you all think of that presentation? What were the things in it that you all maybe perhaps didn't know before? Did that it shock you? So it, it made you all very sad and very depressed. It's sort of like it made people people do to this partition. Uh, maybe not to the same extent, but you know, uh, Okay, good. So you're saying that it all happened because people decided that they didn't like each other? Um, the main, yes, the main reason is because a lot of Muslim leaders, uh, there were Muslim leaders who didn't believe in really the idea of coexisting with one another in one country, in one particular landmass. So it was separated into two separate sort of, sort of countries, sort of regions, yeah. Uh, Muslims in one, Hindus in the other, and then they sort of lived, lived together amongst, amongst each other for a while. Yeah, yeah, there, there were a few throughout um, who, who, you know, obviously didn't didn't feel like moving from place to place, but a lot of this was due to force and due to, uh, due to not being able to choose where you can go and, and where you're allowed to go. Um, all right, guys, so I'm going to have you all do one more thing uh, in your notebooks again. This is sort of like an exit activity, uh, a review activity. Uh, please grab your You, you all not need your candy yet, but like I said, you all will get to just be calm. Keep behaving yourselves, you're all doing really well with that.
Guys, please calm down. Yes. To move because of anarchy or government failure. To move because of anarchy or government failure. Okay. And how did this specifically affect? Well, it separated India and Maine. Separated India and Maine. So it was obviously a very, very negative thing. Okay, good. Anybody else? What is it? The loss of all these other things. Oh, both. Partition and other Thank you. 